Good evening, ma'am. Today I'll be presenting a case of burn contracture. Uh, so this is a 32-year-old male patient who's a chemical factory worker by occupation at Thane. He presents with the chief complaint of excessive post-burn scarring at the lower part of his chin, anterior and lateral surface of neck, upper chest, and right upper arm for 18 months. He has grossly restricted neck movements with inability to look upwards and limited mouth opening. Coming to history of presenting illness, patient was apparently normal prior to the fire explosion accident at workplace 18 months ago, following which he developed burns, which involves lower part of chin, neck, chest and right upper arm. This accounts for approximately 30% of total body surface area. Initially, he was managed for a week in the uh, high dependency unit, later in burns unit and finally discharged after 25 days of treatment. He had multiple burn dressings done under general anesthesia. Gradually, he developed a scar tissue formation over lower chin, neck, upper chest and right upper arm with restricted neck movements and limited mouth opening. There's history of weight loss up to 10 kgs over the last uh, three months post this event. Uh, there's no history of strider, suit and sputum, respiratory distress at the time of sustaining burn injury. No history of voice change, dysphagia or aspiration at the time of sustaining burn injury. No history of airway intervention at the time of the burn injury or tracheostomy in later part of his treatment. Coming to past history, uh, there is no history of diabetes, hypertension, bronchial asthma, tuberculosis or epilepsy in this patient. Personal history, uh, the patient has a mixed diet. He is an ex-smoker. He, uh, he smoked for five years prior to the incident and he used to smoke one pack per day. No other addictions. Uh, there is no allergic history. Normal appetite, bladder and uh, bowel and bladder habits are regular. A patient sleeps in a lateral position with pillow under his neck. Coming to family history, uh, there's nothing significant. And this patient is not on any uh, regular medication. Uh, so provisional diagnosis, as per the history, uh, a 32-year-old male patient with 30% of severe full thickness burn with post-burn contracture of lower chin, neck, upper chest and right upper arm of 18 months duration. Coming to general and physical examination, patient is conscious and well-oriented to time, place and person. He's sitting comfortably with no signs of respiratory distress. Patient is thinly built and moderately nourished. His weight is 50 kg, height is 165 centimeter, and he has a BMI of 18.4 kg per meter square. There are no signs of pallor, icterus, clubbing, cyanosis, lymphadenopathy, or edema. Veins are accessible. Coming to vitals, patient has a pulse rate of 76 beats per minute, measured in the right radial artery, regular in rhythm, normal volume and character. No radio radial uh, or radio femoral delay and all the peripheral pulses were felt. Blood pressure is 120 by 70 millimeters of mercury measured in the left upper arm in sitting position. His respiratory rate is 18 breaths per minute. He has a breath holding time of 35 seconds and peripheral oxygen saturation is 96% on room air. Coming to airway examination, patient has a mouth opening of two fingers or three centimeters. The modified malampati class here is four. No loose or missing teeth. He, uh, the thyromental distance, uh, distance could not be measured. His sternomental distance is 8 cm. Upper lip bite test, grade 3. Patient is unable to protrude his mandible. Temporomandibular joint uh, could not insinuate one finger in front of the tragus. Extension of the neck is less than 65 degrees and lateral rotation is limited to 20 degrees. Flexion is about 50%. Both the nostrils are normal in size and patent. His lemon score is 6 by 9, which predicts a difficult airway. Coming to local examination, uh, inspection, burn scar present over lower part of chin, front of neck and laterally up to medial border of sternocleidomastoid, upper chest and right upper arm. Circumferential scar involves approximately 50% of anterior aspect of neck. The scar also involves upper chest above the nipple line. Left side clavicle is visible and one third of the right side clavicle is covered with scar tissue. There are three visible bands of scar tissue starting from the mentum to the mammary region. No active ulcer, sinuses or fistula. Thyroid, cricoid, cricothyroid membrane are not visible. Coming to palpation, uh, scars are non-tender, firm and raised above the skin surface. Sternal notch is palpable. Thyroid, cricoid and cricothyroid membrane could not be palpated. And the carotid pulses are well felt. Coming to systemic examination, 
a respiratory system inspection the shape of the chest is uniform bilaterally symmetrical with smooth contours there are no drooping shoulders no deformities no swelling scars or visible pulsations over the chest wall accessory muscles of respiration are not used respiratory rate is 18 breaths per minute regular and it's an abdominal uh, abdominal thoracic type of respiration movement of the chest uh, all areas of chest move uniformly and symmetrically with respiration there is no bulging or indrawing of the intercostal spaces trachea appears to be centrally placed coming to palpation all the inspectory findings are confirmed all areas of chest move uniformly and symmetrically with respiration tactile femitis is equal in all chest areas a percussion resonant note heard over all lung fields and auscultation bilateral non vesicular breath sounds heard over all lung fields there are no wheeze rails rub or any other adventitious sounds coming to the cardiovascular system uh, a pical impulse was seen at the fourth intercostal space medial to the mid clavicular line there are no other visible pulsations or dilated beans on palpation uh, it was confirmed that the apical impulse is at the fourth intercostal space half an inch medial to the mid clavicular line a uh, right border of the heart corresponds to second and third intercostal space on the left parasternal line and on auscultation s1 and s2 are heard and there are no murmurs uh, per abdomen uh, inspection the abdomen is flat umbilicus is centrally positioned there are no visible pulsations and no other swellings are present external genitalia appear normal abdomen is soft non tender there is no organomegaly and all the hernia orifices are normal resonant note uh, is heard on percussion there is no shifting dullness and normal bowel sounds are heard coming to the central nervous system higher motor functions are normal cranial nerves are intact all the sensory functions are within normal limits motor function is intact reflexes are intact and cerebellar functions are normal uh, so my summary is a 32 year old male patient with post burn contracture over lower chin neck upper chest and right upper arm of 18 months duration with difficult airway scheduled for elective contracture release and skin grafting under general anesthesia okay uh, nicely covered uh, i'll be asking few important uh, points which were presented during uh, history basically so patient okay. is smoker you told me how many packs per uh, year he smoke uh, ma'am i said one pack per day uh, i did not mention the year you know, yeah okay okay so is there any significance of smokers because now he's already a burn patient as per your history is a burn patient 18 month old burns and there is a, a history of smoking as well so is there any concern of smoker and burn patient coming for uh, surgery um ma'am smokers generally have a higher concentration of carbon monoxide uh, in their blood and uh, like burns patient mm -hmm. sometimes can have uh, yes so that is one reason another reason is as such uh, burn patient when they are acute uh, burn patient uh, they have a respiratory irritation and smokers that smoking habit adds to that uh, problem of uh, respiratory irritation so this thing has to be yes, always kept in mind uh, that uh, peri procedure when acute burns were there uh, you are never mentioned about the history uh, Uh, during his uh, course convalescence course after acute burns that it was there any event of respiratory insult uh, to his system or not so uh, that yeah. is very important we cannot miss it so if, if possible can you yeah. elaborate on that history when he was actually acute patient and admitted in a hda unit so how was his uh, convalescence period that time uh, ma'am this patient did not have any history of any airway intervention at the time that he sustained the burn injury and there was no tracheostomy also done in the later part uh, so he was managed nice. conservatively